Hello Flight Simmers and welcome back to Alpha Hotel Flight Simulator Training. In this series of videos, we'll take a look at some of the most difficult and dangerous airports in the world. We'll take a look at the factors that make them both difficult and dangerous and we'll break down how to successfully fly an approach to them. In this video, we'll take a look at the famous Tenzig Hillary Airport in Lukla, Nepal. Lukla is located in northeast Nepal, approximately 75 nautical miles east-northeast of Kathmandu, which is Nepal's capital and largest city. It's one of the handcrafted or bespoke airports that came with the standard edition of Microsoft Flight Simulator when it was first released. It's the closest commercially serviced airport to Mount Everest and serves as the arrival point for most visitors to the Everest region of the Himalayas, with regular service from Kathmandu. It's considered by many to be the most challenging or most dangerous airport in the world, but what makes it so challenging? There are a number of factors that contribute. First, the airport is located at a high elevation. The official elevation at the airport is 9,337 feet. It's not the highest airport in the world. There are plenty of airports in the Tibetan Plateau that are much higher and a handful in other mountainous regions of the world that are at a higher elevation. But the elevation is certainly high enough to have a significant impact on aircraft performance. High elevation will have several effects on aircraft performance. The thin air reduces engine power and thrust and reduces the amount of lift the wings will produce, which will result in reduced aircraft acceleration, increased takeoff distances, and decreased climb rates. High altitude also increases true airspeed and thus your ground speed. As a general rule of thumb, your true airspeed increases about 2% above indicated airspeed for every 1,000 feet of elevation or altitude you are above sea level. So, for example, at 10,000 feet, which is pretty close to what Lukla's elevation is, your true airspeed will be 120% of what your indicated airspeed is. To give some practical examples of how this would work, at 10,000 feet, again pretty close to Lukla's elevation, flying an indicated airspeed of 80 knots, which is the approach speed in the Cessna 208, will result in a true airspeed and a ground speed, if you have no wind, of 96 knots, so 16 knots faster than what you're indicating. And if you're flying an indicated airspeed of 100 knots, which is pretty close to the speed of most light twins in the game, this is going to result in a true airspeed of 120 knots, so 20 knots faster than what you would be doing at sea level. You still want to fly the manufacturer's recommended approach speed when landing at high elevations, but you need to be aware that when you touch down, your aircraft will be traveling at a faster ground speed than you're used to at sea level and will take more effort to stop. This results in longer landing distances at high elevation airports. But the high elevation isn't the only thing Lukla has going for it. Unlike many high elevation airports in the world that are located in wide mountain valleys or on top of mesas, making them a little easier to fly in and out of, Lukla is located in the narrow Dukosi River Valley with high terrain on all sides. The airport is basically built on a small flat area about halfway up the slope on one of the mountains in the valley and terrain extends up to 5,000 feet above Lukla within just a few miles of the airport with several peaks above 20,000 feet within 20 to 30 nautical miles of the airport. The narrow valley and high terrain means the airport is one way in and one way out like many similar mountain airports. All approaches are made to runway 6, with all departures made off of runway 24. The valley also makes it difficult to make a long, straight-in approach, which means you'll have to maneuver to make a turn on a short final, which is a little tricky. Because the terrain rises so rapidly at the far end of runway 6, this severely limits your options for a go-around. That's not to say you can't perform a go-around, but if you need to do so, that decision needs to be made early, prior to crossing the river. The recommended go-around maneuver is to make a slight right turn initially, followed by a big left turn to fly back down the valley towards lowering terrain. The airfield itself also presents many challenges. The runway is 1,729 feet long by 66 feet wide, making it one of the shortest runways you'll find at such a high elevation. As we mentioned earlier, there's rapidly rising terrain at the east-northeast end of the field. The airport is literally built into the side of a mountain. There's also a wall at the end of the runway, so there's no overrun for landing aircraft. 
There's also a steep drop off at the other end of the field, which means no overruns for aborted takeoffs. And if you come up short on the approach, you'll end up impacting terrain and doing substantial damage to the aircraft. The runway also has an 11.7% slope, sloping up from the approach end of runway 6 to the far end. Again, this isn't the steepest runway slope in the world. Courchevel in the French Alps holds that title with an 18.6% slope, but it's still one of the steeper slopes you'll find in the world. The slope does serve a useful purpose from an operational perspective. The downslope on runway 24 gives aircraft some momentum to aid with takeoff, and the upslope on runway 6 helps aircraft come to a stop after landing, but it does cause some challenges. Anytime an object is tilted or sloped up towards you from your perspective, you're going to see more of the top surface of that object. In an aircraft, this has the effect of making you believe you're higher than you are relative to that object. So when you're making your approach into Lukla, the upslope on runway 6 will make you feel like you're higher than you actually are, and the runway width contributes to this as well, which can result in you flying an approach that's lower than normal to make it look correct. This can be bad because at that altitude, it will take more power than normal to arrest your descent rate and correct to the right glide path. And so for some aircraft, they may struggle to be able to do that at this altitude. You also run the risk of making your approach so low that you end up short of the runway. And with the drop off at the approach end of runway six, that was, this would result in impacting terrain. So it's very important to fly the correct glide path to the runway. And that's going to look like it's too high for most aircraft. Let's take a look. So we've just turned final for runway 6 at Lukla, and this is what the normal or correct glide path should look like. It's going to feel like you're too high, but this is the sight picture you want to see on final. Any lower than this, and you're risking cam coming up short and impacting terrain. Also notice I have the aiming point marking for the runway basically lined up with the bottom third of the windshield. This is a good reference as well. We'll talk about how to get yourself some guidance when you first start flying this approach, but if you want to fly a completely visual approach into Lukla, you'll want to memorize this sight picture for final approach and then try to fly it. In addition to having an unusual sight picture for landing, there's also no electronic or visual glide slope indicator to help you maintain the proper glide path. Though if you're flying an aircraft equipped with the Garmin G1000, you can use a little trick to cheat and load a GPS glide path to follow. And we'll talk about how to do that here in a little bit. The weather also plays a significant role in the difficulty of operating in and out of Lukla in the real world. There are often clouds hugging the mountains in this region, and there are no instrument approaches to the airport, so all approaches have to be conducted visually. When operating in and out of Lukla, make sure to maintain adequate cloud clearance while on approach, as losing visual reference can be lethal and has contributed to numerous fatal accidents at the airport. If it does not look like you can maintain adequate cloud clearance during the approach, do not attempt the approach. Wind is also a significant factor at this airport. Both takeoffs and landings are restricted to a maximum tailwind of 10 knots, so most operations at Lukla are conducted during the early daylight hours, typically before noon, before the winds pick up too much and before the temperatures raise the density altitude and degrade aircraft performance. Since we can customize our weather in flight sim, it's a good idea to set calm winds and reasonably low temperatures for your first approach attempts. So when you fly into Lukla, what kind of aircraft should you use? Most of the light single-engine aircraft in the game are technically capable of operating in and out of Lukla, but many are underpowered for operating at such a short, high-elevation airport. These aircraft may be difficult to get back on glide path if you go under and may have trouble taking off from Lukla, so I would recommend against using them. Light twins fare a little better. The ones in the game generally have enough power to make the approach without much problem, but they generally have higher rotation and approach speeds, so the takeoff and landing distances for these aircraft at this elevation may be a little tight. The best performing aircraft for the field are single-engine turboprops, as they have the power needed to both take off and land at the field, but have approach speeds low enough that the short field length is not an issue. The Pilatus PC-6 the TBM 930, 
and the Cessna 208 should all work well here, but the easiest airplane to use is the Cessna 208 because of its low approach speed and some of the tricks we can use with its G1000 NXI panel to aid us in making our approach. So that's the aircraft we'll be using to do our demo flight. The only twin turboprop that comes with the SIM, the King Air 350, is not a good option for the airport, simply because the runway required for the aircraft is almost twice as long as what's available. But if you have any purpose-built twin turboprop stall aircraft in your hangar, they would perform well here. In fact, the de Havilland Twin Otter, which is available in the game from Aerosoft, is one of the most frequent visitors to Lukla in the real world. Jet aircraft generally are not an option at Lukla. While you might get lucky and get a jet airborne from the field, landing would be tricky. And as far as I know, no jet aircraft have the safety margins required to land or take off from the field in the real world. The field is simply too short for most jet aircraft at that elevation. So let's take a look at doing a quick flight from Kathmandu over to Lukla to demo how you would want to fly the approach there. Again, we'll be using the Cessna 208, which is equipped with the Garmin G1000 NXI. The route covers a distance of just over 100 nautical miles as we have it routed, and it takes about 35 minutes to fly this flight in the 208. We'll conduct this flight VFR at an altitude of 13,500 feet. The route of flight I recommend for this flight is going to be out of uh, Tribuvan Airport, which I believe is the only airport uh, in Kathmandu. Identifier on that is Victor November Kilo Tango. We'll go direct to the Kilo Tango 965 intersection, then direct to Liku intersection, which is Lima India Kilo Hotel Uniform, then direct to Lamidada Airport, which is Victor November Lima Delta, then direct to Lukla, which the identifier for Lukla is Victor November Lima Kilo. By flying the, the route this way, this puts us going down a nice valley where they've uh, built a road going east out of Kathmandu, and then by going over Lamidada, this sets us up for a nice lateral track going, going up the Dakosi uh, river valley into Lukla. We'll also load a visual approach on the G1000 for runway 6 into Lukla. We will not fly it exactly as published. Uh, what we'll do is once we make the corner turn here from Lamita to going to Lukla, we will send it direct to the point that says final on the approach, and that should give us, give us good lateral guidance uh, down or up the Ducosi River Valley and all the way to the runway, and it should also give us good vertical guidance all the way to the runway. You should be able to file this route either in the flight planner in Microsoft Flight Simulator, uh, or you can load it manually in the GPS. You will have to load the approach, of course, manually in the GPS, the visual approach to runway 6. So if you want to do a shorter flight, if you don't want to make the flight all the way from Kathmandu, then you can take off out of Victor November Kilo Delta, Bojpur, I think is how you say that. I apologize if I am mispronouncing that. And the route there, you can just go directly from that airport to Lamidada and then load the visual approach into Lukla. And you should still have uh, the same route essentially once you get to Lamidada all the way into uh, Lukla Airport. Uh, you are going to need to take off and uh, avoid the mountainous terrain before you can go direct to Lamidada out of uh, Bojpur. And I would recommend an altitude of 12,500 feet uh, to do that route since you are headed uh, initially westbound out of that airport. That should take you uh, probably about, mm, I think it's 15 minutes or so uh, to fly the route from that direction if you'd like to do a shorter flight just to get to the approach. So let's look at, take a look at setting up the flight uh, for the aircraft. We'll again work uh, left to right like we usually do. So the aircraft, we want the Cessna 28B Grand Caravan. Livery is up to you. Weight and balance, 50% uh, fuel should be good. That's uh, 1,100 pounds of fuel. That should be fine for this uh, half an hour flight. Uh, and then I put, uh, I kept the two 170 pound pilots in there and then put uh, a, a 180 pound passenger in each passenger seat and then put about 400 pounds of uh, cargo on there. Uh, that would be, I put those in co uh, pods two and three and that should give a pretty realistic uh, weight and balance setup uh, for flying into Lukla. Uh, so we want to start out from uh, Tribuvani, which is uh, Victor November Kilo Tango. So we'll start there. 
and I will go ahead and use runway two. That's the one I believe the prevailing winds favor there, and the terrain also favors that runway being in use most of the time. Uh, if you want to start on the ramp or use a different runway, that's fine as well. Uh, once you take off, you'll just want to head off to the uh, east. And that's all that we can do with, oh, we got to set the date and time. So we'll sell, select uh, mid-May, May 15. That's kind of the height of climbing and tourist season for the Himalayas. And again, uh, most of the flights out there are early morning flights. So we will do uh, 8 o'clock. That'll give us uh, enough sunlight once we get out uh, to Lukla that we'll be able to see the field okay. So 8 o'clock, that'll put us getting in there about 8.35, 8.40, something like that. That should work out well as far as uh, time of day, season, and having enough light to land. And as far as the rest of the setup goes, as far as the weather goes, you can see we've got May 15 at 8 a.m. Uh, I do have clear skies. I have calm winds. I've set the altitude calculation to uh, above mean sea level. And then I set the temperature at 78, uh, 79 degrees at sea level. That gives us about, let's see here, I was trying to make it about 18 degrees. So about 18 degrees here in Kathmandu. 18 to 19, that's a pretty normal uh, low temperature in Kathmandu for this time of year. And that is how we wanna set up our weather. And you can see we've got the flight plan loaded up in the G1000. We have uh, VNKT going to KT965, Liku, uh, VNLD, and then our destination of VNLK, that is Lukla. And we'll go ahead and load up the visual approach for runway six. So we'll go to procedures down here. Uh, we'll go to select approach, we'll hit enter, uh, and then we'll select a visual to runway six. And then we want the straight version, not the vectors. So we'll go highlight straight with the big knob and hit enter. Uh, we don't really need minimums. It's not an instrument approach. And then we will go down to the bottom here and go to load and hit enter. And it will tell us that obstacle clearance is not provided for visual approaches. That's okay. So we'll select enter. And then if we look at the flight plan now, uh, we've got our, all of our waypoints in there. And then it goes to a point called straight. And then it goes to a point called final. And then after that, it goes to uh, runway six, which is the end of the runway. That's the missed approach point, but obviously we're not going to go missed. Uh, you can see up here, if we highlight straight, it does take us through the mountains here and not up this valley. Uh, so what we're gonna do is when we uh, get to VNLD, we're going to go direct to final. We'll highlight final and go direct there. And that should take us straight down that valley right there and give us good guidance for getting down that valley. Other than that, I've got the heading set up to a runway heading here. I've got the altitude select uh, to 13.5, so the autopilot is all set up for departure. Let's take a real quick look at the Cessna 208 and uh, do a quick kind of quick and dirty brief on how to operate it. Uh, since that's not something I've covered on this channel, uh, we'll just do a quick uh, brief of how to operate the Cessna 208. So looking at the throttle quadrant down here, there's a number of different controls. Uh, we're not gonna use too many of these. Uh, the emergency power is the red uh, lever on the far left. We're not gonna use that in this uh, particular video. Uh, the big handle, of course, is the power lever, which is the main power control for the engine. Uh, the prop lever is in the middle here. We'll have that full forward to take off and we may pull it back to like uh, 1700 or so RPMs. Uh, during climb out and cruise, and then we'll want that full forward for landing. Condition lever, all you need to do with this is put it full forward to the uh, full or high power position. And then to the right of that, we have our flap handle. Uh, you'll notice there's two notches here. We have a takeoff approach and the flap limit speed on that is 150. We have a land notch, which is 125 is the flap limit speed on that. If you're using uh, the key binding or a button on your control to raise or lower the flaps incrementally, you only have three positions. You have up, you have uh, the takeoff approach position and you have the land. Uh, but if you grab this with your mouse, uh, you can actually move it to anywhere in the travel that you want to move it. So there are basically an infinite number of flat positions. But we want this set to take off approach uh, for our takeoff. We'll, uh, once we get clear of obstacles on the climb out, we'll go ahead and retract those. And then obviously we want full flaps for landing. 
as far as the autopilot operation, if you're familiar with the G1000, this should be very familiar with you. Uh, you've got your lateral modes of heading, uh, approach, and nav, which we will be using in this lesson up on the top. We won't be using back course. You can toggle the flight director on and off with the flight director key. Autopilot engagement is here. Yaw damp is right here, which you want that on uh, after takeoff, and you want to click that off uh, before you land. Uh, we have the altitude hold here, vertical speed here, VNAV right here, and then the flight level change over here. And then, of course, we have our altitude select knob here, course select knob we won't be using, and then you've got your heading select knob, and that will, if you uh, push the middle of it, it will center up the heading bug. As far as the power settings on the airplane, for takeoff, you can see we have this uh, red line that is our uh, torque limit. So for takeoff, we basically want to bring the power up uh, to where it is just under that, and you can see that moves uh, as well. Uh, so you just want to be somewhere under that line there uh, for your takeoff power. And then you can see it also pops up a cyan uh, power marking there, and that's usually a good indication of where your cruise power should be. So once you get uh, after the initial takeoff and you've cleaned up, you can pull that your power back to that marker right there and that should keep the power about where it needs to be. Other than that, we'll just be controlling power to maintain whatever speed we want on the approach into Lukla, and uh, that's pretty simple, straightforward power management there. We can also control the prop, uh, usually bringing it back to about 1800 for the climb, and I usually do about 1750 for cruise, and then you can bring it uh, up full forward uh, once you're on the landing approach in Lukla. And last but not least, let's take a look at our operating speed. So our rotate speed is going to be 70 knots. Once we get airborne and cleaned up, uh, the best rate of climb is going to be 95 knots of indicated speed. And then I went ahead and put in our approach speed is 80 knots. So I put that in the best glide speed. So we have a depiction of that. It actually does say 78 knots for a short field approach, which locally is a short field approach. But I usually don't worry too much about two knots of difference. But if you want to put 78 in there instead of 80, uh, then that's fine as well. So those are the basic operational speeds. And that should be enough for us to uh, get airborne and get on our way to Lukla. Perform a normal takeoff from the runway of your choice at Kathmandu and make an eastbound turn at about four to 500 feet above the airport. Navigate visually to avoid the terrain in the climb and make your way on course once you're high enough and clear of terrain. Once you level at 13,500 feet, you should be able to accelerate to a cruise speed of 130 to 40, 140 knots of indicated airspeed if you keep your power set on the cyan bug. Once you've leveled and set your power, you should have a few minutes to just relax and enjoy the view before you start your approach into Lukla. So what we're going to do is we get closer to VNLD as we make the turn or as the GPS makes the turn or the autopilot makes the turn uh, from VNLD and gets on course. Once it's on course up to this straight waypoint, what we'll do is we'll go into the flight plan and we will go direct to the final waypoint. And that will give us a lateral track that will pretty much shoot up the Kosi River Valley uh, straight to like a three mile final uh, for runway six up there and you can see we have a top of descent uh, waypoint right there uh, So we will also get good vertical guidance. So we'll get a nice good lateral guidance up the valley and uh, all the way to the runway uh, From the GPS and then we'll also get good vertical guidance uh, to the runway uh, Using that method. Let's talk a little bit about how we're gonna fly this approach and configure as we start our descent so as we're letting the autopilot uh, fly the lateral and vertical path in, this is what we need to do. As the aircraft starts descending, we want to reduce power and then adjust power to maintain about 140 knots initially. When we get down to about 11,500 feet MSL, which is about roughly 2,000 feet above the airport elevation, we want to start configuring for landing. So we'll want to reduce our power. We'll want to extend our flaps to the takeoff approach position, that first notch, as long as we're below 150 knots. And then at 125 knots, as we continue to slow, we want to extend the flaps to land. Then we're targeting to fly 80 knots. And once we get to that 80 knots, we'll want to adjust our power to maintain that 80 knots as we continue to descend. 
By 10,500 feet MSL, roughly 1,000 feet above the field, you want to be fully configured with your flaps to land and be on speed at 80 knots. And again, you can use 78 knots uh, if you'd like to as your short, approach, short field approach speed. As you get down to about 9,400 feet MSL, which is a roughly 200 feet above the uh, elevation of the threshold for runway six, you want to have the autopilot uh, off by no later than that point. Usually when it uh, rolls out on final, you'll be at about 9,500 feet MSL. So you got about 100 feet before you really need to get that autopilot off uh, once it makes that final roll, uh, that final turn onto the final approach course. And then you want to reduce your power to idle at about 9,250 feet, 9, feet MSL and then flare. And again, the uh, runway six threshold elevation, at least in flight sim, is 9,200 feet MSL. So that's where the end of the runway, what the elevation is at the end of the runway. The top of the runway on the other end, it's about 9,400 feet. So it's about a 200 foot difference between the approach end and the far end of the runway there. A little bit of uh, a note about the flare. If you are on the ground on the inclined portion of the runway, you're gonna show a pitch attitude of about seven and a half to 10 degrees. Uh, so you, when you flare, you want to flare at just a little bit over 10 degrees to get a touchdown on the, on the main wheels and not on the nose wheel. That being said, it's better to have a three point landing here or not a great landing here than to float because uh, if you float you know there's no overrun here and you know if you don't get it down and get it stopped you're going to hit the wall uh, so you know it's better to accept a bad landing get it down and get it stopped than to over flare and float and you know run into the wall and I do want to throw a disclaimer in here right before we go and uh, actually try to fly this approach in the sim is that this technique that we're using is just for flight simulator only, obviously. Uh, as far as I know, it is not reflective of any real world techniques. I know they have very specific procedures that they use when they're flying in and out of Lukla and pilots actually have to uh, go out there and train uh, with a training pilot or a Czech airman at Lukla before they are signed off to fly out there on their own. And again, they have very specific procedures that are in place for that airport uh, that may or may not be reflective of what we're doing here today. So this is for sim use only. This is just so you can get out to Lukla and enjoy flying into one of the challenging airports in the simulator and one of the handcrafted airports in the simulator. You know, this is a technique that will work for that, but it's not that's necessarily reflective of real world procedures that you would use. All right, so we're making the turn at VNLD now. And once we have turned on course, then we will go ahead and put in that final, uh, go direct to that final fix and get ready for the descent and the approach. All right, so it's pretty well on course here. So I'll go into the flight plan. I will activate the cursor by pushing the middle of the small knob. I'll roll my cursor down to final, and then I will hit direct. It asks me, do I want to go direct to final? I'll hit enter to tell it I do. Activate, yes, I want to go ahead and do that. And you can see now it's going to take up a heading that's slightly to the right of the heading that I was just on. And that should point me right down the Kosi River Valley right there and make a perfect approach into uh, the Lukla area. The other thing I want to do is I can see if I look at the map here, my top of descent is about mm, just under 10 nautical miles away. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my altitude select about 9,600 feet. I'll just take this value here and round it up. And uh, I'll put that in my altitude select window. So about 9,600 feet. So there's 9,600 feet, and so it doesn't forget to go ahead and start down. Once I get there, uh, I'm going to go ahead and arm the VNAV, and we can see on the uh, GPS or on the uh, uh, auto flight enunciator here that the uh, vertical path is now armed. So I should start seeing a vertical path showing up here as I get closer to my top of descent, and the aircraft should automatically capture it. All I have to worry about doing is managing the power uh, so that I stay on speed initially. And as we can see here, the vertical path is coming alive now. So that will capture here in the next few seconds and then I'll just manage the power. And initially until I get down to about 11,500 feet, 
I just want to keep the uh, power so I'm doing probably about 140 knots or so just basically keep it at my cruise speed there's the VNAV path capture and I will just reduce the power so that it stays at about 140 knots I don't want to go super fast into the valley here and then uh, we'll keep it a uh, steady state like this until we get down to about 11.5 and then we'll start configuring for the approach and the landing Another thing I'll mention here is that if your lateral track is taking you too close to terrain, uh, what you can do is put it into heading mode and manually steer around the terrain and then put it into vertical speed mode and try to stay on that uh, uh, vertical path. And so that's how you can manage that. But the, the caravan does pretty well in tracking the correct, uh, in, in setting up a nice uh lateral path here. So there's 11,500 feet. So I'm going to go ahead and pull the power back just a little bit more and I'm going to go ahead and put my flaps down to 25. And my goal here is to get fully configured uh, to landing flaps and 80 knots by the time I get to 10,500 feet, roughly uh, 1,000 feet above the airport. There's 120 knots or 125, so I can go ahead and put my landing flaps in now. And then again, I'm just going to watch the speed uh, dwindle off there. And when it gets down close to 80 knots, I'm going to adjust the power so that it uh, stays at 80 knots. You can see I've got that marked with a G on my primary flight display there. All right, so we're getting close to 80. So go ahead and bring that power up. Want to make that pink trend line disappear. And then kind of fine tune it from there to stay right on about 80 knots. Go as low as 78 knots is the published short field landing speed. As we're coming through 10,500, I'm going to go ahead and arm this approach mode. And then I'm going to let it fly me down to about 9,500 feet, about two to 300 feet above the uh, threshold elevation for uh, runway six. And then I'll kick off the autopilot and make a manual landing from there. And then Lucla's right over here. Right, so there's 10,500. I'll go ahead and arm the approach. So it looks like it didn't catch. There's my approach diamond. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put it into vertical speed mode here. And get it down on that diamond. And now you can see it's captured that glide path. So now it looks pretty good. All right, we're on speed. We're on path. And you can see Lukla is right over there. So we're going to fly right over... Not too close to this terrain, but uh, you know, far enough out that we get a good straight end approach here, and we'll make the turn on a final. It'll make the turn what you're going to think is a little too late, uh, but this will be a good lineup for the runway. It'll do a, do a pretty good job of this. See our distance about 0.9 miles from our final point, so we should start the turn here momentarily. Got the approach mode, mode arm, so we know it's not going to level off at 9,600 feet. Got a good clearance from our terrain over here. And we're making our turn to final. And once it gets lined up, I'll go ahead and kick off the autopilot and go ahead and do a manual landing. A little bit fast, so I'm going to cut the power just a little bit, try to get back on speed. And again, we've got that. Looks high, but this is an appropriate glide path for us. I'm going to go ahead and kick off the autopilot. I'm going to try to keep flying that flight director so I don't go too low. And then about uh, 9250, I'm going to go ahead and chop the power and make a flare. Chop the power, bring the nose up, bring it into reverse, bring on the brakes, and then if I start to get too slow by the hill, I may need to put some power in to get up that hill, and we are safely down in Lukla. So that is how you make an approach and landing into Lukla. It's a good idea to fly this approach a few times in the 208 using GPS guidance. 
Once you become familiar with a proper flight path, you should be able to try it without using GPS guidance and in other aircraft types. All right, so if you land in a place like this, you probably also want to learn how to take off from a place like this. Fortunately, it's fairly straightforward. You want to taxi out and give yourself as much runway as you can, just like you would with any short field. It'll be a pretty standard short field takeoff. We'll release the parking brakes. We'll hold the tow brakes. We'll bring the uh, takeoff power up to the takeoff torque. Once we've got good takeoff power, we'll go ahead and release the brakes. Uh, once we get over the hump at the... Uh, top of the hill here and start heading downhill you'll notice the aircraft will start accelerating pretty rapidly as it gets a little bit of a gravity assist we still want to rotate at our standard rotate speed of 70 knots and then pitch for a vy climb out uh, once we get beyond the end of the runway we'll go ahead and hang a left hand turn and fly down the valley climb up to our cruise altitude and from there you can go back to Kathmandu or uh, anywhere you'd like to go from there that you have the fuel for so let's go ahead and demo that real quick We'll check we've got our uh, flaps set to uh, take off approach, and that's what we need. Uh, we'll go ahead and release the parking brake. We will hold the tow brakes. Go ahead and bring the power up to take off power. Be patient as it comes on up there. Yep, right at the red line there, so that's good. We'll go ahead and release it. Starts to accelerate slowly because of the altitude, but then we'll come over the hump here. And we'll get a little bit of a gravity assist, and you can see the start speed start to pick up pretty rapidly after that. You see we're going to eat up most of the runway, even with the downhill assist. There's rotate. Pitch up to about 10 degrees for our best rate of climb. Looks like we're safely above all the terrain. We'll go ahead and lift the flaps up. Again, pitching for that VOI about 10 degrees, and I'll aim it down the valley and we'll climb up to our cruise altitude. So again, pretty straightforward getting back out of Lukla. Getting in is the trick. That concludes this video. Hopefully it's giving you the skills and confidence you need to successfully fly into this amazing and challenging airport. As always, if you've enjoyed the content, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and ring the notification bell to be alerted to new content. Make sure to check out my channel for videos on basic flying skills, instrument flying, avionics training, aircraft checkouts, and specialty training like this. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.